All right, hey guys, welcome to Fire Arms and Such, and today we're going to be doing a very, very, very brief intro into custom control on a Simplex 4010 Fire Alarm control panel. I finally was able to learn really how to do this, and it has enabled me to do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, which, if you guys have noticed, there's a new box at my desk. We'll be getting to that in this video and finally explaining what it is all about. So we are going to dive right into the 4010 itself. We are first going to log in to our level four access. And we'll get a trouble. New enunciator sounds different, so get ready for that. Then we're going to go into programming. And it's going to give us a programming trouble. And then we're going to go silence it at the enunciator. When we are over here, we will actually uh, I will actually go over what this box is. So there is now a game wall test switch here, and it says door holder disabled when light is lit. So basically what this means is when you turn this switch, well, it's not going to happen now since it's in programming mode, but when you turn it, the system will give me a trouble that says door holder bypass. And then this light will illuminate, telling me that the door holder is in bypass. <coughs> and what this will do, so when I pull the fire alarm, the door holder will stay open. Now this isn't cutting power to the door holder like the button does, because that will cause the door holder to close. This keeps the door holder, the door open during an alarm condition. <clears throat> so to start, we are then going to go right into custom control. And the way I'm going to kind of explain this is I'm just going to show you what my custom controls are set at, because I have two programs in here. So we start in custom control and there's equation one. This is what my equation is right now. So we're going to go into edit. So it says when there's a physical short, so you have to go in and you set your condition, your point, and then you can do an and, an or, or not. Meaning if it's an and, if you want the output to activate, both uh, inputs have to be active. So if I said physical short on 310 and physical short on 37, in order for the output to happen, it can't just be 0.10 or 0.7, it has to be both. But with an OR, you can put in a list of points and the output will happen for any of the points. So if either 0.7 or 0.10 happen. And then if you put in a NOT, that means if you have a physical short on 310, but you have a physical short on 37, it will not happen. But if you have a physical short on 310 and anything else, it will still happen. So it says we have a phys if we have a physical short on 310, then it has our end of input because those are all of our input equations. Our output will say track on, meaning it will turn on. Pseudo point 18, well card 18 dash 19, 19 is the door holder bypass. So it will turn on pseudo point 19 and the priority is 99. And then that is the end of our output. So then if we just go back, we can then go to equation two which is where I have that LED set up because the way that I have my LED set up is I'm going through this relay. But you can't just go into a relay, relay controls and be like, only turn on for this kind of trouble. You can have it turn on for any kind of trouble, but I only wanted it to turn on for one specific trouble. So I used custom control. So I said, if there is a trouble on point 18, 19, so if there's a trouble on the door holder bypass, meaning it is on, then we have end of input, then we are going to set on NAC card 0.6, NAC card 6 is auxiliary relay 2, so we will turn on relay 2 with the same priority, and then that's the end of output. So really with a custom control, it's just a big formula. You have your condition, your point, and then if you're adding in any more points of what else you want to trigger. So your input is what triggers something. These are your conditions that you'll have that will make something happen. So you set your condition your point and your priority and then you put in as many inputs as you want and then you go into your output so this is what you want to happen you will have your condition your point and your priority so if you want something to be on you set it to track on or set on if you want something to be off track off set off or any other things so with the input you can have it be a physical short an abnormal condition a normal condition uh, trouble, a disable, an alarm, an acknowledgement of an alarm supervisory or trouble. You can have just regular supervisory. Pretty much any condition that can happen in the panel, you can set on as an input. And 
the way I have my point 10 set up, because I have point 10 being both the button and the box at my desk, I set it as a utility point, meaning when it goes into a short or an abnormal condition, it will read me nothing across the panel. It's just something happening. It's not going to give me a trouble. It's not going to give me a supervisor. It's not going to give me a fire. It's not going to give me a priority two. It's not going to give me anything. It's just going to happen in the background. But what happens, so here we'll get out. Oh, wait, we got to reset it and get it out of um, service mode. We got to do a oh, warm start just a sec. So what will happen when I turn the key is it will close a utility point. Now, normally nothing would happen, but because I have the custom control, it will give me a trouble because the door holder is bypassed. That's fine. Okay, so now we have no troubles. So we will come over to the desk. And when we want to disable the door holder, we will turn the key down and the LED will illuminate and then we will now get a trouble. But this isn't like trouble M110. This will be trouble door holder bypass. So what this means is if I initiate an alarm, the door holder will stay open until I turn the key. So if I'm like, okay, now I want the door to shut, I just turn the key, light goes off, door, door holder closes. So that is a brief little explanation on custom control, how to do it. Remember, it's just really a big formula. It's input, 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 output, output, output. It's really not that hard. If you have the 4010 manual, you can go in and see what every card point is. Uh, card one is your NAT card and relay. Card two, oh, I'm blanking on what card two is. Uh, card three is your ID NAT card. Cards nine through 14 are like your enunciators. Card 18 is what's actually happening in the panel. Uh, those are just the ones that are uh, coming off the top of my head. So, if you have any other questions about custom control, drop a comment and I will try to answer it. So, thank you guys for watching and as always, have a wonderful day.